How you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Uh, today, I just wanted to talk about when you're trying to quit drinking alcohol, you have to either find a way to do it or you've got to create a way, you've got to make a way for yourself. You know, sometimes, no matter where you look, you know, you're looking here, you're looking there, you're looking everywhere. <laughs> you're looking on AA, you're looking on Rational Recovery, you're getting books out the label, you're watching videotapes on YouTube. Um, videotapes, you're watching videos on YouTube and you still can't find something which suits you, suits your life. Now, what does that say about you, first of all, you know, what does it say about where you are and what journey you're on, what part of the journey you're on? Um, well, the first thing you have to look at is, ask yourself is, are you looking for the perfect thing you know the perfect solution to your problems that if you only keep looking that eventually you're going to find the problem you're going to find the solution to your problem you know is that what you're going to do is that what you're doing you know if that's what you're doing then you know it's there's never a perfect time to do this and never going to be a perfect solution to it um and a lot of the time you've just got to try and even lump stuff together from the different areas i mean you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the AA, but I think some of the things that they talk about um, are genuinely, I think, um, have got some value in them. I think the social aspect of the AA has got definite value. I'm not sure if I want to be sociable with some of the people that are forced to go to AA because they're forced there and they're not, they're not of the same mind as everyone else who is not forced there to go. You know, there's a lot of people that go there because they and i'm not talking about being forced by the, their own situation i'm talking about being forced um by a judge because they have to go there because they've been drinking and driving or because they've done some bad shit when they've um when they've been drunk you know and then they go to court and the judge says well if you don't want to get a heavy sentence you've got to go to the AA." you know they're the type of people the people that just don't want to be there i don't think anybody truly wants to be an AA, but there's a lot of people that just feel like this is their only alternative. And you know, they, a lot of people are brainwashed into thinking that that's the only alternative there, you know. They've got the alternative of going to the AA, or they've got the alternative of going to a recovery clinic, which costs thousands. And unless you've got either the money to do that or the insurance is gonna cover you to do that, it's an impossibility for most people. So what do most people do? They go to the AA, and, and by the way, most of the recovery clinics use 12-step processes anyway, you know. And I got an email off a guy today, um, and I can't say the guy's name. I can't remember it, but I mean, I won't say it anyway. But he said, yeah, there's, forget about the 12 steps, there is only one step. And it's true, you know, there's one step to this, and that's not put the alcohol into your mouth. Um, that's for the alcohol. Changing your life is a different thing. There's a lot of different steps that you have to go through for that, but it's not the alcohol. You go through 12 steps of alcohol recovery with AA or most of these recovery places, and what do you get out of it, right? You get the same, you might spend the rest of your life alcohol free, but you're not free of the alcohol because the alcohol is drummed into you over and over again. The alcoholic mentality is drummed into you over and over again. Plus, I'll leave aside, the influence of God and um, as I said you know I think alcohol is mentioned once or twice in the 12 steps and God is mentioned in one form or another seven different times so I'll leave it up to you to decide whether it's a religious organization or a help organization it's certainly not a self-help organization anyway so sometimes there's just you're looking for a way you know that there's things out there for you to do but whatever you look at you can't find a way so in that case you've got to try and piece whatever you can together and find a way in other times you just can't see anything you know i mean you see the traditional stuff like the aa and recovery clinics and all that kind of stuff but you sort of dismiss them and you know that they're not for you like i did and then you're just floundering around because you're thinking from the perspective of a drinker's mind, right? You're thinking from the perspective of, um, uh, I'm drinking now, how do I become a non-drinker? You know, it, 
you, you can ask as many people as you like. You know, it's like asking somebody, um, how do I become um, a jet pilot, for instance, or a snooker player? You know, somebody can say to you, this is what you do, this is what you do, and that's what you do. But until you actually get out there and pick up a snooker cue, for instance, and start playing the game, um, you don't know what it's like to to pick up a snooker cue. You don't know what it's like to hit the balls. You don't know what it's like to to um, be under the lights and all that kind of stuff. You know, do you, do you get what I mean? Uh, you know, if, if I said to you tomorrow, look, I love going out camping, and you've never been camping before, and I try to explain to you what it's like to sleep under canvas and to sit out in front of an open fire underneath the stars. Um, listening to some nice music or whatever it is that you're doing, you know, eating food that you've cooked on a campfire. <laughs> it's very difficult for me to explain that to you. It's the same thing here, you know. Um, it's, it's just difficult to, to, try and, to try and become a non-drinker in your mind without actually doing it. And that's all right, you know. You know, it doesn't take long. You know, once you get through your first week you've done a week once you get through your first month you've gone through four full work weeks you've gone through four full weekends without drinking so you've got a bit more experience you understand might not be a lot easier but it will be a bit easier and that's what it takes it takes taking it step by step uh, bit by bit allowing yourself to go with the flow and just to accept things the way they are you know, you can't change um, big things about things. You can't make it so that you're six months into the future. Uh, you can only be a minute into the future. You know, like uh, you can only be here now and then, you know, take it step by step, minute by minute, hour by hour. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, sometimes you just got to wait for the experiences to come by. You know, think about a lot of the obstacles that might stand in your way, for instance, I mean, these are things that people use as excuses not to do things because they say, well, this might happen or that might happen. You know, shit might happen, you know, that's that's the point. You know, there might be obstacles. There are going to be obstacles in, put in your way, you know, there are going to be walls in your way, but you have to find a way to either circumvent those things, go around them, go underneath the obstacles, or like Vincente Fox said of President Trump, you know, there's a, um, a very cheap way of going over the President Trump's wall. It costs $17, it's called a ladder. <laughs> so go over the top of your obstacles. You know, the, what I'm saying is you have to think about these things. Think about the obstacle, specifically the obstacle that you're having problems with. And think about ways of either um, going around the obstacle, um, going over it, uh, you know, making detours yourself, whatever you can think of to to make that obstacle not be an obstacle, if you know what I mean. You know, just look for any way of either um, circumventing the obstacle, going around the obstacle, or avoiding the obstacle, you know. I mean, like I said, with pubs, with socialising, if you cannot bear to um, split up with some of your uh, drinking buddies, then at least avoid them for a while, you know, avoid them while you're going through the first while. I mean, I think you have to avoid certain people in certain situations um, all the time if you're going to be able to do this in the long term. I mean, I can go in now and I can talk to people that I used to drink with in the pubs where I used to drink with them, no problem, because it's just become habitual of me, uh, for me now to not drink, you know. Um, another thing is that most people when they start out on this journey are looking for external uh, solutions to their problems. Now, most of the problems that you will ever encounter with this are going to be internal, inside yourself, inside your head. Um, and most of the solutions are also going to be found right there as well, inside your head. They're not going to be found outside. You know, uh, it comes back to that old thing of learn what's in your control and learn what's outside of your control. Um, everything that's inside of your head, for the most part, is inside of your control. You control that. That includes your cravings, your um, anxiety, your uh, the way you think about 
your friends, uh, what you think about boredom, um, if you're bored, if you're not bored, uh, all that kind of stuff is all in your head, you know. It's when you start giving into that and say, well, you know, it, it's not in my head, it's because I'm bored because of my circumstances, I'm bored because of where I am, because who I am, you know, because of the people that I'm around. That's when you start externalizing internal problems. You know, boredom is a state of mind, nothing more than that. So, you know, look for external or look for internal solutions to internal problems. Um, and normally, if you've got external problems as well, there's an internal solution, and the internal solution is a lot easier to find than trying to find external solutions, you know. Look into the future, look into your own future, and see what you can find in your own future. This is where, this is the thing that's going to stop you from going back to alcohol ever again. If you can find something in your life that is pulling you um, forwards, pulling you inevitably forward so that you cannot go back, that's where you're going to find the biggest benefits, you know, the meaning in your life. Um, you're also going to find meaning in your values. Uh, you, you know, I hate to say this, but when I was drinking, a lot of my values disappeared. You know, they were eroded very, very slowly, but surely. You know, they just disappeared. A lot of my values disappeared or were watered down. You know, what I was left with was watered down, skanky versions of uh, my values, you know. I mean, all the stuff that I've done, I've never done anything really bad, you know. More just sort of mildly destructive things when, I, when I've been drinking or afterwards. and Mostly for, for my life and then... You know, that has a kick-on effect to other people in your life as well, you know, so they get affected. And obviously that's much more painful when you see other people's, um, you know, things happening to other people that shouldn't be happening to them. Uh, and all because of what you're doing, something that you're doing in your life. So uh, one of the things that you can do before you stop drinking even is to start looking at your values and looking at where those values are now and how, you know how you can revisit some of your old values and look at the things that you value in life. You know, what do you value? Who do you value? Look at those things because I'll tell you what, they, once you get a foothold on those and you start to understand exactly what it is, you know, where your principles come from in life, I think that has a good, it becomes a great foundation stone for moving forward because list them out, put them down on paper and read them every day and start thinking to yourself, well, you know, is this truly the person that I want to be, you know? Um, doing this, saying this kind of stuff, you know? And you'll find that a lot of the time it's uh, it's a great guiding light. I mean, I think one of the biggest problems that we have nowadays is we, we, we have no um, moral compasses. You know, for me, I was brought up as a Catholic, right? And I was brought up reading the Bible. And... I remember when I was 12 years of age and I was walking down, um, there was a side street off the main street in Dublin, off O'Connor Street, and I don't know what I was thinking, but I I suddenly just realised that I didn't believe in God, and I didn't believe in what the Bible said, I didn't believe in any of it, you know, and it hit me like a ton of bricks, it was just so devastating. I remember um, bursting into tears and wondering where where could I go? Literally, where was I going to go? I couldn't go to church. I mean, what the fuck was the priest going to tell me? Because as far as I was concerned, it was all lies. Um, you know, I, I couldn't go to my father, who was a, who was religious. He prayed and he did all this kind of stuff. My mother sort of had different things on, on her plate, you know, and she wasn't worldly wise that way. Uh, you know, and I felt lost for, for a long time. Um, and I think that was part of probably the reason why I started drinking as well, you know. That's why I started drinking heavily. But I'm just saying that I think those values mean a lot when you've got a prescription uh, to follow, like a holy book, you know, and you think, well, this is what I, I can do. And I, I mean, I don't believe that the values that are taught in the Bible are bullshit. Right? I think, you know, um, treat your neighbour as you would like to be treated yourself, you know. 
um, and I, you know, that that kind of stuff. The basic moral lessons, I think, are, are still hold a lot of value to me, you know. Um, and maybe that's just because of the person I was brought up as, you know. If I had been brought up in a different country with a different religion, I'd be thinking about a whole different set of values, you know. Um, but they do play, play a big part, you know. I mean, I've always sort of, um, since I was maybe in my early 20s, I've read a lot of philosophy um, and I found a lot of sort of comfort in that kind of thinking, you know, in uh, thinking of people like Bertrand Russell, uh, people going back 2,000 years to the same time as Christianity was born, people like Marcus Aurelius and uh, Epictetus and um, Seneca, uh, the stoical sort of philosophers. Anyway, I'm going off track here a bit. I'm just saying that, you know, for this whole thing to work, you've got to find a way within yourself to want it to work for a start. You've got to find a way that is going to push you forwards from behind and it's going to pull you forwards from in front, right? You know, thinking about the alcohol from the, the, that, that perspective of the AA, where you're always going to be an alcoholic, you're, you're only one drink away from drinking alcohol, and you've got to listen to stories about alcohol over and over and over again, right? That is only going to keep you pulled back. It's like it's like a straitjacket of the mind, right, that you're putting onto yourself and all these other people are putting onto you every time you walk into an AA meeting. And, you know, I'm just saying you've got to think for yourself with this. You've got to start thinking away from the alcohol, leaving something like that behind you, you know. If you want to diet, um, you've got to leave the, the, the old... Uh, eating habits behind you you know this diet going on one diet after another diet after another diet that doesn't work you know because you go on to the diet and you lose the weight you come off the diet and you put the weight back on right what it works is a lifestyle choice right you make a lifestyle choice that you're not going to eat this type of food again and you are going to eat that type of food and you're going to get exercise and you're going to do all these different things in your life to not only lose the weight gradually but keep it off you in the long term and that's exactly the same type of principles that I'm talking about here you leave the alcohol behind you you make that lifestyle choice that you're not only going to not drink the alcohol but you're going to move away from that type of thinking that you can get anything from um, that uh, momentary thought process of I need to um, drink something or take something something external is going to solve an internal problem and it never will as long as you have that type of mentality external um, internal problem, external solution, you're always going to come unstuck. It's internal problem, internal solution, external problem, internal solution first and think about it and try and figure out how you're going to make the best way. And it's normally an internal solution, but you'll find, you know, sometimes there there's an internal pathway to an external solution, but it always starts out up in, up in your head. So if you, if you cannot find a way within the things that are already there, including my videos, right, then you've got to figure out a way of making a way for yourself, you know. Um, and don't be afraid of taking one bit out of one thing and another bit out of another thing. If it works for you and you can put together a package that works for you, then all the best to you, you know. We've got a, a thing coming up in a couple of weeks' time over on the website. It's um, called the Mastermind Group Program. Um, it's going to be the mastermind group. I haven't figured out what the full name of it is going to be anyway, but it's it's basically a forum um, that we're going to have there. Uh, I'm going to be there every single day trying to help people, answering questions, um, keeping things on the straight and narrow. I'll also be doing a Q&A um, once a week at least, you know, maybe twice a week if, if, uh, if there needs to be. At the beginning, it's probably only going to be a once a week because, you know, we're only starting this out for the founder members and stuff like that. Um, plus there's going to be videos that will only be there like you'll only find them there and the videos are going to be all around this, a specific theme so you know there might be 10 or 15 videos around the theme of cravings there might be a, uh, a few videos about sleeping there might be a few videos about triggering and so on and so forth and this is going to build up into a big library you know I think by September there'll be at least 15 20 videos for the, the people starting out you know it's not going to be free right I, you know I just can't do this and offer this as a free thing, you know, because it's going to take up so much of my time. Um, and 
you know, if people are not willing to make the investment in this, then, you know, this is always here. The YouTube videos are always going to be here. You know, I'm going to put out those. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to concentrate a lot of my time in, in the group and I'm really looking forward to doing it. So uh, if you want to find out more about that, then come on over to alcoholmastery.com and you'll get the um, sign up for the email uh, newsletter. It's, you'll find it on any of the pages in Alcohol Mastery. Just put your first name and your email address in there. And uh, I'll send you out the Alcohol Mastery Startup Pack, which is a, a bonus. But I'll also send you out any information about this um, uh, program that we're starting out. There's going to be a whole lot of different stuff. It won't be on Alcohol Mastery. It's going to be on Habits Unplugged. And the reason I'm doing that is just because it makes a whole lot more sense to me to... Uh, as I say, you know, my focus is away from the alcohol all the time, away from the alcohol. Now, if every day you're trying to push yourself away from alcohol, you come to a place called Alcohol Mastery, you know, it's a, it's just, it's a psychological thing. It's only a small thing, but it does matter, you know, so it's going to be on Habits Unplugged. And we're going to be talking a, a lot more about different things there, you know, over, once we, the membership starts to grow, I can bring different people in from um, different places to talk about uh, different things, you know, from uh, different uh, habits and mindsets and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, I'll leave it there for now. Um, until next time, take care of yourself. Keep the alcohol out of your mouth. Uh, stay safe. Onwards and upwards. Take care. Bye-bye.